Welcome to my Facebook Live for Tuesday, October the 26th. How on earth can it be October the 26th already? Okay, um, hoping that we're live. I can just see, yep, I can see on the computer that I am live. So, hello and welcome. I'm going to show you a couple of the items that we're using tonight before I get started. And that just gives people a couple of minutes to join in and to make sure that we're all here. So it's in the mini catalogue, which goes through until December. So we've got a couple of months left. Hi, Laurie. Thanks for joining me. I'm just showing some of the items we're using this evening. I'm going to use this set, the Words of Cheer. To be really honest, uh, I bought this months ago and it hasn't seen ink yet. So I thought it was about time I showed it some ink and I have the matching dies and I pulled these out yesterday when I was planning this card and I'm using two dies, I'm using the two happy dies but as you can see it's all pristine and I need to be using these things so I'll just pop that back for a moment, oh in fact I won't because I need it later. But I do like the really pretty flower here. I think I need to make some simple cards with this piece stamped and coloured in. Um, maybe a different week, that's what we'll do. We'll make some simple cards. So I'm using this set and I'm using some paper. I'm using the Whimsy and Wonder paper, but I'm only using the greens that are in it. So. I know it's got beautiful pinks and blues, but I'm using the green papers. I'm using the one with the trees and the dotty paper. So if you want to play along and you have these papers, hi Jane, nice to see you. I'm just showing everybody what we're using. I'm going to use this paper from Whimsy and Wonder, but just the greens, the trees and the dots. and. Uh, piece of mint macaron card because this this is the card that coordinates with this piece of paper and I'm using the words of cheer and I haven't actually inked anything up with this yet and I only opened the dies yesterday when I was starting to plan this card so let me just take those out now so um, the dies that I'm using are these ones, the ones that just say happy. Um, so let me pop that down and show you what we're making. So the card itself is this one. Now, a couple of weeks ago, and I think last week as well, I asked anybody who wanted me to make some kind of a card or a project to let me know, and I would have a go. Well, nobody actually got back to me, but I was talking to my husband and I said, I want to make something different this week. So he said, well, make a card you've never made before. So I thought, hmm, that's the last time I'm asking you. <laughs> so I'm making a card that I've never made before. So I looked on YouTube and um, I looked on Pinterest, wasn't sure what I was going to make until yesterday afternoon. And I saw this self-closing card and I'm really sorry, it was all in German. I did rudimentary German at school and honestly, I, I used to be able to ask for a hot dog and pick the pencil up from the floor, but even I can't even remember those. <laughs> so, so the lady's name is Birgit and this was her um, like stamping name. And I had to Google what it was called. So Google Translate told me it was a self-closing card. And so I'll leave that up there just in case you sort of want to write the name down and then you can look for it yourself. But I made many templates. Yeah, down the rabbit hole of Pinterest, you're right, Jane. Um, I thought I'll just look for 10 minutes and an hour and a half later, I was still just looking. <laughs> so there are some beautiful things on Pinterest though. So I made lots of templates. Uh, one of the problems was it was all in centimetres and the paper in Germany is a different size to what we have here. 
So I had to fiddle about and make it so that it fitted our cards and that it would fit in an envelope. So I think I've got the measurements as good as I can get and it still fits in, oh, let's put that down, still fits in an envelope. Okay, so I promise you it does fit. Okay, so this is the card. Now it might have another name. Google may have led me down the wrong path by telling me it's called a self-closing card. So it might have a new name, I don't know. I will post a picture with all of these measurements on um, after we've finished. So it's, uh, it's almost like you're making a box. You know, I make a lot of 3D things and it's almost like you're starting to make a box. But what happens is you just fold the sides over. This side, the bottom right hand corner goes in here and it closes all by itself. Now, Birgit had made hers and she did a layer, her main base card, then a layer of card, and then a layer of DSP. But I didn't do all those layers. I've just done a base card and a layer of DSP. So let me show you how I think you make it. It's really pretty and I did fulfill the brief. It's not a card I've made before. Um, I have a, a bin full of pieces of paper like this where I cut and change the sizings. If I'm ever making a card that I, I'm not quite sure of, I always make it on a piece of either copy paper or like a piece of my scrap paper or even sort of older pieces of card stock that I know I don't want. And that way I'm not wasting anything. So. I you will need a trimmer if you're making this alongside of me. Okay, now, so let me just move this. So the base card is the piece we're going to make first. Okay, it's really pretty once it's made, really easy once it's made. It's just that first time you make it. But I think that's the same with all fun folds and things. You're never quite sure, are you? I need a piece of mint macaron and let me just, these are all my garbled notes. So I'm going from my garbled notes here. So it sort of makes sense to me, but I wouldn't like to put it on camera because it won't make sense to anybody else. Okay. So you need a full piece of card. So, oh, Laurie, <laughs> you're funny. No trimming, no, no trimming. And I'm not doing anything where it's five eighths, three eighths. Or... We had a, a card class last night and Laurie was there and um, it was a mystery card. And I'd, I'd sent all the ladies the paper and they had to trim it themselves. And we had such a lot, such a laugh, trying to make all the, the lengths the right size. Um, but we had fun. But I promise, Laurie, there's no trimming to three eighths or any any other eighths tonight. Okay. So this is just a basic piece, eight and a half by eleven, and we're going to put the short side in the trimmer first. And at this left hand side, we're going to make a score at two inches. So I'm just measuring it up at two inches on my trimmer, and I'm going to score. Okay. I'm going to take it out, and I want to make. Uh, a score at the right hand side but what I'm going to do is just turn the card around and at the right hand side it's going to be two and a quarter inches. So I'm just popping it in again. There we go. Oh. <laughs> it was a lot of notes Jane. <laughs> it was a lot of notes. <laughs> it was a lot of ink. <laughs> okay now on the long side we're going to score at three and a half at this side. So I'm putting it into the trimmer. If you don't have a trimmer, you can do this on a scoreboard. It's probably easier to see on a scoreboard, to be honest. So three and a half, taking it out, turning it around, and we're gonna score at two. And that's it, okay? So basic piece of card, we're gonna, actually, so basic piece of card, Score two inches on the left hand side, two and a quarter on the right hand side, 
turn it round 90 degrees, score at three and a half inches and at two inches. And this is the shape you'll end up with. And then you need to get your scissors. I'm going to use my long scissors for this. And we're going to cut on every single one of these corners. We're going to cut all of them out. Now what I did find when I was making it, when you cut, you know, if I turn it over you can see it maybe a little bit easier. You know you get quite a wide score. Cut to the right hand side of the score line just to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room when you start to fold the card over. Don't cut, you know, right over here on the left because it might just be a little bit tight and you'll end up maybe having to trim a piece off later. So I found it was easier just to keep to the right hand side of your score. Yeah, Laurie, you, you're good at trimming and cutting. So, okay, so I'm just gonna cut down these lines. Let's try and cut straight. Okay, and we're gonna cut all of these out. Now, those of you who know me really well know that I love making 3D items. I make lots of boxes. I don't always show them on my channel, but I make lots of boxes, um, lots of bags, things to put cards in, things to put gifts in. And when I was making this, it really did remind me that I haven't made many boxes yet. I haven't done my Christmas gift boxes or anything. If you'd like to see some of those kind of things on Facebook Live, let me know. Um, we can do treat packages and boxes. So, but I really am not asking my husband again. He'll, he'll come up with something equally ridiculous. Okay, so you then end up with sort of a a squat T shape. So let me get the, come on, you see, I'm just going to put it over the top. Ooh. Oh, it goes that way. Oh, thought I'd cut it wrong then. There we go. So you can see it's just that shape. So it, it's quite simple to cut. It's quite easy. Okay. Next, I'm going to fold all of those edges over. I just need my big scissors. And I'm going to burnish it really well. I want this card to have some kind of memory to it so that when we're turning it over and trying to make it self-close, it automatically folds. And then I'm going to close all the pieces like this, go over them again, turn it over. And I'm going to go down those edges again. I'm going to open it, close the top and the bottom. Burnish it again. Don't be afraid to keep burnishing. The more you burnish it, the better it will lay flat and it will remember where you want it to fold. Okay, so now, ah, now I can see that this is already a little bit tight on this corner. So I'm just going to trim another little piece off. Remember I said to you know cut to the left hand side of the score line just so that it folds better. So I'm only taking that tiny little piece off, but that just stops it from folding. Okay, it folds better now. And the same here, there's just a tiny little edge on here. Oops. If you wanted to, you could always cut this in your trimmer as well. After you've scored it, you could um, just go down with the trimmer blade. Right. Okay, so I'm going to just put it this way around as though I'm folding it. There's a little tiny edge still on that other side there. I don't want to make it too much smaller, else our paper won't fit. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay. Now this one isn't quite straight, so I'm just going to move it slightly and go back over it with my bone folder.
Okay. Now the edges of all of these you need to corner round. If you don't have a corner rounder, that's fine. You could leave them, you could leave them squared off. That's fine as well. That will look pretty, but it looks even nicer if you corner round. Now I have this trio punch, um, and if you've not seen this before, this shape rounds a corner. All you do is push it in, and you can see there are little grooves there. So you push it in and you can punch okay and it will corner around really nicely for you this one gives you like a little fancy detail I'll pop it in again and I'll show you you see it just cuts a little pattern in the corner for you and that's really pretty if you've got a double layer of card or a, a layer of designer series paper and you want to put it over a corner you can see how it would show through the bottom layer so that, that looks really nice. And then this one, I wasn't sure for the longest time what this was, but it's for um, sort of if you, I think you have to put it this way, it doesn't go in a corner. If you want to make a hole for a ribbon, if you're making a tag, and that lines up and it goes straight across. So, so it makes just a little hole that you could thread a ribbon through and make a tag out of it. I'm sure there's lots of other things. You could probably make a whole row of these going down and thread a ribbon in and out of that on your card as well. But I'm only using the corner rounder part. Now, I still use my Project Life corner rounder, like this one. And I'm going to carry on using that tonight just because I find it fits nicer in my hand. So I'm just going to open it and then the card on this, it just slides in and you see you've got this little raised lip. So it goes in and you can't move it. If you always want to be sure, you can turn it over backwards and watch and just check that your card is right in the middle and you still get that nice little corner. Hi Judy, nice to see you. We're making a self-closing card. Um, it's it's not one I've made before, I found it on YouTube. And this one folds underneath and so it goes like this and it just fits in an ordinary envelope. So all we've done so far is we've cut out the really easy template and now we're going to corner around all of these corners. So I'm going to just, I like to look at it from the back but you can just line it up at the front and if you've got it in that little groove there you know it's going to be nicely rounded I just like seeing it so we're going to do every single corner okay oh, that's all of those okay so let's get rid of those little pieces so that's our base already you can put that on one side these little pieces, make sure you save because they're the right size for putting through some of the, um, these are the stitch so sweetly dies, but you can make a nice little backing layer with them. So don't throw them out. Make sure you, you keep them and go back and make little tags or um, just little die cuts out of them. Okay, so now we need to cut Judy, no worry about being late at all. Uh, it's always nice to see you. This is for the designer series paper and I will post a picture of this one as well. There are, um, I've labelled mine just so that you can see. I've got flap number one, two, three and four and that's how I've done these. So what you need is all of these, every single one, you're going to cut out in the dotty paper. Let me just move this. So here's one of everything in the dotty paper. Okay? And then once they're cut, put them aside because they're going inside. Then for the front, you need to cut out number one and number three 
So number one here, number three. You need to cut them again in the dotted paper. Okay? These are going on the outside. And you need to cut two pieces, number two and number four, in the patterned paper. Okay? I maybe didn't explain that very well. You cut everything, all the flaps in the dotted paper. You cut number one and number three again in the dotted paper. And then number two and number four, you then cut in the second pattern piece that you've got. Just check um, a, if you have a paper that has an orientation, like this one does. This one, it doesn't matter. But if you have, let me just, this is going to be number two, and I want my paper to go this way. It's no good having it cut this way. And, you know, it's, it's not going to be the right way around. Okay, so I know that's going to go there. Now, I think the trickiest thing now is working out which side of these needs the corner rounder. So I found it was easier to have my card in front of me like this and put each one in its place. Okay, so I know that this is the bottom piece. These two edges need corner rounding. So I'm just going to put it in my little rounder again. It would be much easier to leave it square cut. Okay. And as I do them, I'm going to attach them. I think that just makes it a little bit easier as well. Just, just make sure that you've got the right piece because not all of the flaps are the same size, you see. So I know that this is the bottom one because it's a little bit wider. I'm sorry if this shiny paper is um, one of those patterns that when it's on camera, it dazzles your eyes. I hope it isn't. Yep, then we're just going to pop that on and go over it with my bone folder again. Okay. My, I'm going to do my next dotty piece. I know it's going to go at the top here, so the bottom two pieces need to go through the corner rounder. Check that it fits before I go any further. Yep. So what's everybody up to this week? I had card class last night, but I haven't got any, I don't think I've got any other stamping up things this week. So I've, uh, I've got my Christmas class to finish prepping and my stamper stack class to finish prepping. So I don't think I've got any other things going on. Okay, right, so now I'm still working on the front and I'm going to go with my patterned piece and my corners need to be top and bottom at the right hand side. It really is easy and intuitive once you've got the pieces in front of you. I wanted to do this back in piece instead of the dots, I just didn't have enough of the paper. I didn't have the right widths for it, so that's why I've got the dotty one as well. And you know I said earlier that the that Birgit who'd made this card had a, another layer. She had card and then paper. All you would actually have to do is cut all the same pieces of design series paper and just take quarter of an inch off each measurement. And then you could have that extra layer as well. Oh, that's sticky down there. Let me just find my glue eraser. Or is it just there? Because I might find that the card sticks. There we go. Okay. The last piece is going to be this right-hand side piece. And I need corner rounding top and bottom on the left. Oh, you're making a card for Janet. Okay. Oh, I, I don't suppose you can tell us about it either, just in case she pops in, and then she would know what it was. <laughs> so. So Laurie's busy with her dog walking and grooming and boarding. Uh, busy week. I know you said yesterday you had lots going on. 
and then lots of people starting to book for holidays. Um, it's nice that people are starting to think that they can go away again now. And, you know, life's changing back again. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, and this one will fold into here to make four. Okay, but I need to put my papers on the inside. So let's make sure I've got it the right way around and I've got it ready for the inside. Now I started off with a piece of um, basic white and it's four inches by five and a quarter. And I had a little strip. Oh, thanks Jane, I'd love to see the card, thanks. I've got a little strip of the dotty paper that I'm just gonna put across the bottom. It was just a little leftover piece. It was nothing special. I didn't cut it specially. It just happened to be that when I was cutting all the um, all the little layers, I had this tiny piece left. Just make it straight. There we go. Trim that little extra piece off. And we don't need that. And even I'm not going to save that teeny weeny piece. I was going to attach this one. I don't need it to be my wet glue this time. This, I don't have to try and move the card around if I put it in the wrong place. This is going to be really easy to line up. Okay, and then we've got all our first sets of paper that we cut out and they're going to go on all the inside pieces. Uh, Oh, Laurie, I think I think you'll love making this one. Okay, so that's not that piece. That's going to be that piece. And let me see. I need to corner around top, left and right. It's starting to get dark early on an evening already, isn't it? You can see I, during the summer when I was doing my Facebook Lives, I didn't have to have a light on at all. And then... Last night for card class, we had to have a light on. Dark evenings are drawing in fast. Okay. I'll pop this down here. And don't worry, when you've got all your paper on, because it's a little bit thicker, you might just need to burnish it again. And if you don't have... Um, a bone folder you know what I always do you've seen me do it lots of times I use I use a stamping block and sometimes if I can't even see when bone folder is then I'll just get an acrylic block so that works just as well okay now this one's going to go over here I'm going to corner around the right hand side oh Laurie do you think you could make this one for a birthday card for Friday or any of the cards we made last night would they work for Friday? Pop this on here. You, you really don't have to put designer series paper on all the inside pieces. I just think it looks nice when you open it and uh, there's that little added extra. Okay, corner around the bottom. What are you up to, Judy? Have you got crafting this week? I have some work actually to do for the Canadian um, demonstrator group, uh, the Facebook group. I must remember to do that. But I think that's the only other thing I've got this week. Okay, so left, top and bottom on this one. And then let's glue it in. And it really is only a problem, this designer series paper, if it has a pattern on it. That's the only time you have to be a little bit more careful. 
Okay, so that's our inside all decorated. You could stamp a picture, uh, you know, an image in here. You could put another little sentiment. I might even put one of these little sentiments on the inside when I'm finished. Okay, so to fold it up, I go one, two, three, this one, number four, tucks in under this piece here. Okay, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to burnish it. Just because we've got that extra paper on now, just to make sure that it folds flat. And it's still just a little bit, a little bit wet from the glue. So while that's just drying, I'm going to decorate my envelope. I've got a, still some of this dotty paper. I'm just going to put the piece on the back. It on with this. I know there's not a lot of liquid glue left. So I'm just going to pop it on with this this time. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely be putting all these on my blog and um, I will add a little photograph of the measurements onto my Facebook page as well. But yeah, we'll put them on the blog. I do hope you have a go with it though. Until yesterday when I didn't know it existed, you know, uh, I was quite happy. And now that I've seen it and I've made it, uh, I've got all sorts of ideas for it. All sorts of designer series paper that I can use. You don't, you don't have to do much stamping even, really, do you? Okay, so here's my envelope already. And oh, that's nice and dry. I'm going to do last little bit, which is still quite quick. I'm going to do my decoration for the front. Now, the lady who made it, she decorated this piece. And she had her accent paper on these two sides. But I wanted to decorate the top. So just let me move this and I just see where I put these little pieces of card. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Okay, so what I decided, she had um, some writing on here and I thought, actually, let me just show you something else. I know this doesn't fit and it's from a different project, but you could just have a, a circle with a sentiment and a picture on. You, know, you could put, oh, this one's a bit big, but... You could put just a, a happy Christmas or something on a sentiment going across, or even on the bottom if that's where you had your like the dotty paper. But I wanted to do the happy from the, those dies that I showed you earlier, the ones that I hadn't used until yesterday afternoon. So I die cut this this one, which is the backing piece. I did it in the mint macaron and then this piece that says happy I did it just in a scrap of the basic white card I didn't use the thick card I just used the ordinary um, thinner card that we had right, so what I ended up with let's move those again with these two pieces so this is the backing and then the little happy piece Glues just over the top. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that just a nice little sentiment, even on its own? You could, it doesn't have to be Christmas. You could make it in other colours and just pop a little birthday underneath. So it said happy birthday or happy anniversary. See, these don't have to be wintry sprigs at all, depending on what colour you cut them out with. So this is what I'm going to use. You, I'm not going to pop it up on dimensionals, but... Um, you certainly could and if I'd thought about it I would have put the adhesive on the back you know our adhesive sheets I would have put that on the back so then once you die cut it it's just like a sticker and you can cut out the as you take it out of the die it's already cut out and then you just peel the back off and it makes a sticker so I should have done that but I've only just thought of it I'm doing it with my liquid glue so that I can just wriggle it around a little bit and make sure all of the pieces 
uh, in the right place. But what a nice, quick and easy little sentiment that is. Okay. And I'm going to put it just over here. Okay. It would be nice popped up. It would look pretty, but I don't want it to be too thick for my envelope in case I put it in the mail. And because this is already like one, two, three layers of card and one, two, three, four layers of paper, then it's already a little bit thicker than normal. It still would go, you know, um, with an ordinary Canadian stamp, but I think if I start and put more bulk on the top, then it wouldn't. So I'm just gonna have mine glued down. So those dies, Laurie, they're from the words of cheer, and it's called Christmas cheer. And you get the happy, um, this one cuts out the big flower. There are stars, flowers, little sprigs. I'll just hold it up a little bit nearer to the camera so that you can see. And then on the second page, it says cheer. And you cut this out as the back in, and then this goes on the front with the letters for cheer. And there's holly and more sprigs. But it's easier to see if I show you it in the catalogue. And it's right near the front here, this one. So it's this one. And you see how that cheer one, it's got the back end just the same as the happy, but you add the little individual letters. It's really, really pretty. But and when I saw it in the catalogue, I thought, right, I need to have that, I need to get that. And then as I say, it's it's sat on my table for a while and I've only just got it out. But next week I will use it. Uh, I'll make the cards that I was talking about, making a simple card and putting this little image on and colouring it in. So we'll do that next week and I'll show you these again. I'm sitting in my own shadow now. I'm sorry, I've just realised it's getting really dark here. I'm going to start and have to put my light on, I think. So let's just glue this one on and I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle so it still fits on you can still see it all but a tiny little bit of it tucks in behind there okay, and then I've got a little scrap of my basic white and I got this left over from cutting the inside pieces of white when I cut them down you always end up with these little quarter, uh, these little half inch pieces, and I save them. I always save them to make my um, sentiments on. So I'm going to use, I'm going to make it Christmas. I was going to do holidays, but I'm going to make it Christmas. So let's, let's find the one that says Christmas. Here it is. Okay, and I've got my mint macaron ink. I'm really sorry that it's shadowy now. I never thought to put my light on. Let me just see if I can turn my light on, if it will make any difference at the moment. I think it's probably in the wrong place as well. If, oh. Might make it even more shadowy. Have a look and see if it makes it more shadowy or less shadowy. Mm. I don't think it likes that there, does it? Okay, let's try going over the back of the, the desk. <laughs> I'll have my light ready for next week. Let's see how that goes. Let me just move out of the way. If it's really, it is an hot light, but it looks really yellowy. Okay, that might be a bit better just for now. Okay, so I've got my little Christmas, oh, it's too big a stamp block for that. Let's find something smaller. Okay, and because I haven't used them before, I'm just going to prime them. I'm just going to rub my thumb over so that if there is any oils or little bits left from manufacturing, then it's gone. And I've got my mint macaron 
I'm not quite sure where I want it yet, so I'm just going to stamp in the middle, see how that stamps. Mm, a little bit much ink on there, let me just turn it over. Let's try with a bit less ink. Oh, threw it away, that's a bit better. It's not a, it's just a bit blurry on those letters there, whereas with a bit less ink it's not. I know the picture's still a bit shadowy. Sorry, ladies. Okay, so let me find my sawn scissors. And I want the happy to go here, and I wanted the Christmas to go here. So I'm just going to trim this down. I think. That might be a bit too tight an angle. Let me just make that a little bit smaller. Cut it about here. And again, if you're giving it by hand, you could probably um, put it on embellishments. Um, I don't like that angle, it's still a bit more acute than I want. I think I'm just going to cut down a little bit at the left here. And let's find my glue. I'm just going to tuck it so that we can't see the very edge of the sentiment. It's just tucked behind. There we go. And then what you could do is you could add some little rhinestones. It's very pretty if you put rhinestones on these little um, bits here. I have seen um, another demonstrator making a card with these. And she put little red rhinestones on these. Lots and lots of them. But that would look pretty as well. But otherwise, I'm just really happy with that. Um, I think it's a, a nice little fold. It's a little bit different. I love how it opens you know, it, and how it came together. So I'm going to put it, fold it back. One, two, three. And then you only have to tuck this bottom corner behind that right hand side corner and so there we are that's my self closing card from Birgit and I, I don't even want to butcher the last name or whatever her stamping name is but I did find it on YouTube and I really appreciate that she posted it so there we are ladies what do you think do you think you'll give it a go so I hope so I hope you will and if you do um, if you do, post a picture. Thanks, Jane. I'm glad you'd give it a go. Laurie would like some DSP inside too. So, like this DSP or, or more DSP or a layer of card and then the DSP? It's pretty, isn't it? Do you know, maybe it wasn't so bad that my husband said, do something you've never done before. Because otherwise, I'd never even have looked for something like this. So, yeah, maybe it's not all that bad. <laughs> and here's my little envelope that matched. Okay, ladies. Now, I do have a YouTube video tomorrow. I'm making my very last paper pumpkin alternative. Oh, you'd like the tree paper inside. Yeah, that would look nice. Hi, Rosemary. I didn't see you were there. I do beg your pardon. I've got my very last YouTube on paper pumpkin. And I've made the shaker card with the little clear envelopes like we made at our class. And then I sent them out for my team social as well. And we all made them for team social. So I'm making a shaker card, but that is my very last paper pumpkin alternative. I have loved this set. I think it's the nicest of all the paper pumpkin Christmas sets and I had I have two sets and I've made all my cards. I've got all my cards ready to send to the UK. Most of them are alternatives, um, but I've, I've just enjoyed playing with these. So if you've got that set, no, you're gonna have a whale of a time with it. Okay, ladies, I will see you. Oh, hi, Janet. 
have a wonderful birthday on Friday, Janet. Um, I hope you have a great day. And I'm glad you're gonna give the, go, the card a go as well. It, it really is a fun one and it's not as difficult as it looks. Now, it's really easy. I'll post all the measurements on my blog. So pop over to the blog uh, as soon as I've got the video uploaded for the um, YouTube, then I'll put the blog post in as well. Oh, thank you for the hearts. That's nice. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you all again next Tuesday. Bye. Have a wonderful week. Bye.